Hi, I'm Matt with Legacy RV Center, and today we're going to show you how to uh, winterize a travel trailer. So, go this way. So the first thing that I do when winterizing a travel trailer is I'm going to drain the water heater. Um, there's a couple different configurations, but the drain plug on the water heater is always located on the outside and it's always at the bottom. Um, in, this, in this particular circumstance, it's on the left side. Um, we're going to uh, loosen this using an extension and a socket, and then you're just going to remove the plug and let the water heater drain out. Prior to removing the plug, you do want to relieve any, any pressure in the water heater by opening your P&T valve until the pressure dies off um, or you'll get wet. So um, once you remove that, you let that drain, we're going to go ahead and go inside. Now, on this particular unit, we're equipped with a bypass uh, on the water heater already. Some units may not have this, especially older uh, RVs and trailers, um, and there's a simple way to get around that. You would just disconnect the two service lines at the bottom and top, and then make yourself a short length of hose with two half-inch male pipe thread fittings on either end, and then just connect the two lines together, um, obviously after the water heater is drained. Um, this one, we don't have to do that. They make it a little bit easier. Uh, when the unit is in its normal use mode or summer mode, the service lines will be open and the bypass line will be closed. When we're winterizing, when we're winterizing we don't need to fill the water heater with antifreeze um, because we just, we just drained it. So we want to bypass it. It will save you, um, in this case, six gallons of antifreeze um, and um, avoid you having to flush your water heater over and over to get all the antifreeze out of it in the spring. So we're going to close the service lines and we're going to open the bypass line. This now allows the antifreeze to just make a loop. On this unit, we also have another convenient feature. This unit is equipped with a bypass line or a pickup line, excuse me, on the water pump already, meaning we don't have to disconnect anything. On this particular one, we shut off the pickup line from the, coming from the fresh water tank by simply closing this valve. And at that point, we open the valve that is going to go into our gallon of antifreeze. This makes it so that we don't have to put any antifreeze in the fresh water tank. Um, saves you antifreeze. Also, again, keeps you from having to flush it out of the tank in the spring. If your unit is older and doesn't have this set of this equipment on it, um, you can simply access your water pump and you can find that by just listening. Just turn it on and, and follow your ears. Um, there's always going to be some sort of access to it. In this particular case, we would remove the vacuum side of the, of the water pump, the line going to the vacuum side of the pump. On these water pumps, if you're looking at it from the front of the pump, it will always be on the left side. Um, you can also identify it because it's the side that has the strainer on it. Um, you would just remove that line again, make yourself a section of half inch hose um, with a half inch swivel fitting um, pipe thread, female pipe thread on the other end, thread it right onto the pump and then put it in your antifreeze. Um, once we've gotten all that done, uh, we can go ahead and turn on the water pump. Oops. which in this unit is actually located in the bathroom. And we'll just wait for it to pressurize. To avoid wasting antifreeze, you probably want to make sure that your low point drains are closed like I did not. Actually, it's our outside shower today. So once the system is pressurized, and because we, it wouldn't take that long normally, but we have no water in this unit. 
um, so it filled up the lines. Um, if you had water in the unit, it would pressurize much quicker. Um, but once the pressure is built up, you're just going to, at that point, want to go to every fixture, every faucet um, in the unit and turn the, and turn the water on. Run the it cold and hot individually until you get antifreeze coming out of both sides at every fixture. You want to do that at your main, at your main uh, sink, bathroom sink, run the toilet, uh, your shower. Um, don't forget the outside shower if you have one. That's a common one people forget. And then lastly, you want to open the low point drains, um, and they'll be your they'll be located underneath the trailer. Um, once you have antifreeze through the whole system, you can shut off the water pump. Um, I do like to lift the line out of the antifreeze first, open a open a, a sink to pull all the antifreeze out of the line. That way you don't uh, get it all over your floor. Um, once you've done that, the pressurized side of the system is ready to go for the winter. At that point, you just want to go around to each sink dumping about a cup and a half of antifreeze down uh, the sink and shower drains because they have P-traps that will hold water. Um, drain your holding tanks, drain your fresh water tank completely, uh, put your water heater plug somewhere where you won't lose it in the spring, and um, you're good to go.